Hello, Devils fans. Welcome back. I'm Rob, and this is Quarantine Talk. And I'm joined by Colton White and Brett Sini. Uh, Whitey's to my left. Scenes is down below. And guys, uh, we'll start uh, with you, Colton. Uh, where are you at right now, and kind of how have uh, things been going? Uh, yeah, so I'm in uh, London, Ontario. Um, I'm living at home with my parents. Uh, it's usually the spot I come to every summer after the hockey season. Uh, ever since uh, I left my first year of junior, I've always uh, just have come home and uh, enjoyed my summers and the time uh, with my family. So I'm just uh, bunked up with them and just in, enjoying some family time uh, and just sort of hanging out, hanging out at home. Brett, how about you? Uh, yeah, I'm back home in London too, probably about a 10 minute drive from, uh, from Whitey um, at my parents' house too. So yeah, similar to Whitey, just, you know, spending time with family and uh, kind of enjoying, um, you know, enjoying seeing my brothers and my parents. How, uh, so Brett, I saw you, you guys had a little bit of an intense game night there. Uh, some cards involved and you're playing some chess. How'd that go for you? Uh, yeah, we play, uh, play family euchre every night. So me and my brother play against my mom and dad and, uh, yeah, they get pretty heated games. Um, we're all pretty competitive. So, uh, and then, yeah, playing some chess too. Um, I actually, I, I'm probably a better chess player than my brother, but, uh, it might've been a bit of a staged photo. It looked like I was getting my, <laughs> my butt kicked, but, um, but no, it's been good. Uh, just trying to keep the, uh, the mind, uh, mind buzzing too. Now in, in chess, I've never played chess in my life. Uh, you got to be like four or five moves ahead, right? Yeah, uh, those are probably the, the pros, but <laughs> usually me and my brother, you're just thinking about the next move. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we'll go back up to, to Colton. Uh, you get home and just a lot of uncertainty right away. It was pretty crazy 24 hours there with uh, the team in Laval and uh, so you, you, you get back to Binghamton and just kind of waiting to, to see what happens and, and head home there for a little bit to, to kind of wait it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got back from Oval and I think, uh, we hadn't really heard anything. And then we were just using the gym at Ansco, me and scenes, we lived together. Um, so yeah, we were just working out, uh, once a day and then just sort of hanging out. Uh, we were trying to keep our distance like we were told to and self quarantine. Um, but we were seeing some of the guys and just hanging out just because we, we didn't know if it was going to be the last time seeing each other for a while. Um, and then, yeah, once we found out we were uh, told to go home, we sort of packed up right away and, and just took off and headed for home. And you, Brett, same thing pretty much, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Whitey, we're living together, so our schedules were uh, pretty spot on with each other. Um, oh. It was pretty – yeah, it was – yeah, it was pretty boring for a while. We were able to see some of the boys and, and that sort of thing. But um, but once we kind of got the go-ahead to, to head home, everyone kind of went their own ways. Now, uh, I didn't know you guys lived together. I just picked really well there. That's, uh, that's yeah. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got a couple of fan questions here. Uh, fans submitted some questions on social media. Uh, first one, we'll start with Brett there. Uh, what is your favorite hockey game you've ever played in and where was it at and kind of give us a little bit of a, a rundown if you could think about that uh favorite hockey game probably for for most you know pro players is either your first pro game or probably my first nhl game was probably uh you know my coolest game probably most emotional and stressful game but um yeah i was in uh it was against the islanders at the barclay center there and uh yeah, it was pretty special. I had my family there, my mom and dad. And um, yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, something you look forward to your whole life. And uh, yeah, it was just a surreal moment. And can't say I remember too much of it. I was kind of blacked out for most of it. But um, but no, it was pretty sweet. How about you, Whitey? Uh, yeah, I'd have to follow along the same lines. I think your first pro game and then once you get called up and make your NHL debut, I think it's a special time. I remember Last year, it uh, I got called up and I played in Edmonton, um, and my parents were able to fly out and, and see me play, and that was just special to to see them after the game and just sort of share that moment with them and all the sacrifices they made. Um, and then, yeah, I don't remember too much about the game. I just remember like my second shift uh, being on the ice with Drysaitel and McDavid, and I ended up uh, getting a penalty my second shift in the NHL. So it was a warm welcome to the league. And that's uh, that's a tough barn to to get your start in right what was uh, the the noise level like and just had to be pretty crazy yeah I remember uh going out for uh for the game actually not for warm-ups but the game uh, I remember like the music was 10 times louder the fans 
Um, I remember getting chills. It was the coolest feeling. Um, yeah, it was pretty surreal just to see like the, all the rinks are way bigger. Everything's just 10 times, 10 times bigger. It's, it's a pretty cool experience. How, and both of you can answer this if you want. How tough is it in your first NHL game? You, you know, you want to play your best, but I mean, the, it, it, you have to kind of take it in. I feel like the, the crowd and, and, and everything somewhat leading up to that. Uh, yeah, I think that kind of comes down to, I mean, New Jersey, I'm sure it's the same everywhere, but, um, you know, there's so many, you know, great leaders there and some, some really good older guys that, you know, it doesn't matter who's going up, if it's your first game or you're, you're just a young guy and obviously they can tell if you're a little nervous, but, um, you know, I was lucky enough to, to play with, uh, I think I played with Coleman and Stafford my first game. So two guys that have kind of both been in my shoes and both had a lot of, um, a lot of games in the league. And um, so, no, they kind of took me under their wing and just kind of, you know, helped me through it, told me uh, take it shift by shift. And, um, and yeah, no, they, they were a big help for me. How about you, Whitey? Same thing? Yeah, pretty much. I remember, like, we weren't doing too well in bingo. And then uh, we because we had a lot of guys called up because the Devils had a lot of injuries. And then uh, we weren't doing so hot in bingo. And then when we went, when I got called up to Jersey, there were so many guys from bingo already up there. I think it was more so like a, the Binghamton team. Like it was re really easy to just sort of be myself because I knew most of the guys at the time. And it was just a sort of easy transition that way. And I was familiar with a lot of the guys. So I just had the opportunity to hang out with a lot of the bingo guys up there. So I think that's what uh, helped me just sort of be more comfortable than I normally would have been. All right. Uh, next question here. What is, and we'll start with Sini at the bottom, what is a family tradition that is your favorite that, you know, whether, you know, no matter when you go home, what is one thing that your family does, uh, tradition maybe, or, or anything that, that you really enjoy? Uh, yeah, for my family, usually the only time, I mean, other than like an interesting scenario like this, but um, every Christmas we usually get together um at you know one of my family's places either either my parents place or my uncles or my grandparents and uh christmas eve we'll always watch christmas vacation um with chevy chase so you know i think by now all of us can you know go line by line and have it memorized and we still laugh at the same jokes every scene and uh and that sort of thing but and then usually we'll have uh everyone picks like an appetizer or one of their favorite foods and and we'll go out and we'll just kind of have a huge spread of, of everyone's favorite kind of dish. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, our own family tradition that we have every Christmas. All right. I got to ask, I love uh, Christmas vacation. What is, what's your go-to uh, scene or, or quote that uh, you might fire off? Uh, mine is actually when, um, when Chevy, uh, he can finally get the lights on. <laughs> and uh and his father-in-law always goes uh, uh some of the lights aren't twinkling and i i always blow up at that too for whatever reason just can never appreciate it it's unbelievable i know it's yeah i love that oh uh, all right colton uh, how about you uh okay i'll i'll follow along the same lines and then i have another one too uh christmas time or christmas eve sorry we always, uh, we, we, we just started randomly, uh, when I was younger, me and my brother and my mom and dad, we'd, uh, we'd have nacho night and you sort of like make your own nachos. Um, and then we'd do that. We'd have nachos. You just sort of build your own nachos, whatever you want on it. You can have, um, then we have dinner together, obviously. And then after that, we'll, uh, we'll do like a little movie marathon. We'll watch uh Christmas uh, vacation, um, the Grinch and the elf. And then, We'll sort of do whatever, what other, what other ones we want to do. But yeah, um, other than that, uh, every year before I leave for the season, we always, uh, we either go out for dinner or we make a nice dinner. Um, sometimes in the past, we've gone to the keg. It's a, it's a pretty popular one in Canada. Um, and then other times we've just uh, cooked at home and invited some uh, friends and family over just for a little send off uh, before the season starts. One last gathering. I love, I love the keg. I'll tell you. You make your own nachos. What do yep. you what do you put on your nachos? Uh, ground beef, ground turkey. Um, throw some peppers in there. Um, some hot peppers too. Uh, maybe some mushrooms, and then have some salsa and some some guac and some sour cream on the side, probably. Nice. You put it all in the microwave at once, or? Uh, so we do it in the oven. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll cook it up. We'll cook the ground beef or ground turkey. Um, 
do that on a fry pan and then uh, we'll sort of build our own from there and then throw it in the oven for a bit and throw some cheese on there and let it melt and, and go from there. Nice. Nice. I like it. Um, okay. Next question. What workouts, we'll start with Brett. Uh, what workouts are you doing at home? Uh, obviously, you know, if you don't have a, a big setup, maybe some, some makeshift workouts, what, what have you been doing at home to, to stay in shape? Uh, I've been kind of doing a variety of things. Um, obviously it's, you know, we can't be on the ice, so you got to find a way to kind of stay in shape and, um, especially conditioning wise. So, uh, kind of every Tuesday and Friday we have like a New Jersey offers like a yoga session, um, in the morning. So that's what I was doing this morning there. And, um, and then also, uh, you know, the, our gym back home, obviously we can't go into it, but, uh, or me and Whitey strength trainer, Mitch Stewart, he's uh, kind of started his own website where he's putting kind of sweat at home workouts on there. Um, so body weight stuff, or if you got kind of light weights and, and that sort of thing. And um, so I've been doing that kind of five times a week as well. And then uh, a lot more time, like, we, you know, we have so much time uh, on our hands that you got to kind of fill with stuff. So I've been doing a lot of stretching and then um, ended up getting a spin bike too. So I've been buzzing on that quite a bit, trying to keep my cardio up, but yeah, it's, it's more or less just, you know, just keeping your body moving and, um, you know, you don't want to burn out so early, but it's just kind of, you don't want to lose that game shape uh, as much as you can. Yeah. How long would it, uh, I mean, it, you obviously you have the preseason and depending on what happens now, uh, you know, how much time would you say you need to kind of get back into that form you were in in, in mid March? Uh, it doesn't actually take too long. It, you know, it depends a lot what you're doing kind of on your own time, but, uh, even when after the season's over, you'll take a month off and then, uh, you, you're, you know, you take a month off the ice and you're back on. So those first couple of skates are, you know, they're obviously pretty tough and tiring and, you know, your feet are hurting and, you know, maybe your, your puck touch isn't there as much, but I'd say it takes like three or four skates to kind of get your feet under you again and, and, uh, and kind of feel back to normal. Um, but yeah, it's hard to replicate kind of that game conditioning, um, you know, off the ice. It's, there's only so much you can do. So, yeah. uh, no, hopefully they can get those rinks open soon and we can get back on the ice. Mm -hmm. How about you, Whitey? You got uh, a home gym or, or doing some makeshift? Yeah, I've been, uh, we have like a couple things, like a couple dumbbells and, and some stuff like that and some bands that I've been using. Um, I've been trying to go for runs two to three times a week too, just to, keep my cardio up as well and try to stay in shape that way and then we have the same trainer obviously but uh our trainer's been really good we've been able to if we have needed something we've been able to go pick it up at the at the gym if need be if uh we're in dire need of it um and then I also have uh like taken a mobility course where I'm I'm learning about uh like different movements and stuff that I can incorporate with uh um my body and the things that'll help me like my hips and my low back um it's through like one, our gym and one of the guys that is a, uh, is a coach there. So I've been doing that through him. It's just via like Skype, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you probably lose like your, your feel for the ice and stuff like after a week or two, I think. And then it probably takes like a week or two to fully feel like get your timing back and everything. The cardio will come probably after about a couple of weeks, but I think, uh, yeah, I think the timing's the biggest thing, just feeling the puck again and, and just uh, feeling confident again. The first few times, you're not going to feel so hot. But, yeah, it'd be nice for the rinks to open up and we can go for a wheel. I've been missing the feeling of uh, the cold air hitting my face and just being on the ice with the guys. There's there's nothing better than that. It's, uh, it's cold here, so right now. But uh, <laughs> So next question. This is a, an interesting one. Okay, if you could choose uh, a line, a fan, like if you're on a line and you could choose four other guys to be on your line of any era, any time, who would it be? And we'll start with uh, Colton up top. Okay. Huh. I'm not going to go with any of my teammates, but uh, left wing, <laughs> I'll probably go uh, Patrick Kane, Crosby up the middle, um, Ovechkin on the right, maybe. And then uh, my D partner, maybe, uh, maybe Nick Lidstrom. Nice. Nice. I like yeah. that one. I like that one. All right. Scenes, how about you? Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, I'd, I'd say probably Theo Fleury and Martin St. Louis up top. So some other smaller the small guys. <laughs> yeah, giving some small guys some appreciation. And then uh, 
probably go Bobby Orr on the back. That's a no brainer. Um, maybe Nick Lidstrom and then, uh, probably in net, uh, Dominic Kashuk. He was probably, you know, being a Sabres fan growing up, he was, he was probably my favorite goalie. So I'd go with him. Love the mask he had. Just a, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, player that was good. Oh, Legendary. for sure. For sure. Uh, so what, what do you guys got? Uh, I mean, there's so much uncertainty right now. Um, uh, you know, have you been, you know, hanging out with, with family via, you know, Zoom or, or have you guys all been staying in touch somehow, whether it's a, a text or, or on FaceTime? How have you guys been kind of staying in touch? Um, for me, I think uh, just Snapchat, my buddies texting them, FaceTiming. Uh, we had like a Zoom call the other day uh, just to hang out because uh, we haven't been able to, to hang out like we normally do or do anything active. Um, and then just family, just staying in touch, uh, phone calls, that sort of thing, and just trying to keep tabs on how everyone's doing and making sure everyone's staying safe and, and doing okay. Um, but yeah, and then just hanging out with family mostly and just spending time with them when they're at work and stuff. Uh, it's a little lonely, but you got to find time to, to do stuff. And whether that's reading or watching uh, some Netflix or going for walks, whatever the case may be, uh, you got to find yourself uh, to keep occupied for sure. How about you, Brett? Yeah, uh, pretty similar. Um, obviously, with the boys, we get our group chat and Snapchat and that sort of thing. So, um, see the odd chirp thrown around in there. But, uh, <laughs> but no, in terms of my friends and stuff like that, uh, you know, a lot of trivia nights, you know, with the Zoom. Um, you know, we've, everyone kind of weekly will have someone host it and everything. And got one tonight with my family and uh, my girlfriend's family. So, um, just doing that sort of thing, kind of you know, as much as keeping the body moving, but keeping the mind moving, still talking to a lot of people and, and uh, yeah, and just trying to, you know, as much as you can socialize and, and cause it can get pretty, you know, lonely and boring. So, you know, if you can talk to people and everyone else has nothing to do. So you had a phone call and, and that sort of thing. It's, it honestly, it feels like, I mean, it, it's been, I don't know, almost 35, 40 days. It, it, it's been so long, but it still kind of feels like yesterday where, uh, you know, we were sitting outside the rink in Rochester and heading off to Laval. It's, it's been so long. It, it feels long, but it just doesn't seem that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Now it's yeah. 35 days. I thought it feels longer than that. Has it only been? It might be. Days? I, yeah. my, ma my math is probably off. I got a calendar going and I probably <laughs> yeah. might've skipped a, missed a few days here and there but uh yeah. so next question uh since you've been with the devils uh in ben binghamton what has been the your the best game best moment that either of you have had so far um here we'll start with uh, colton oh i don't know that's a tough one what about um, this it's got to be the spinorama ot winner yeah we can go with that one but i'm thinking like <laughs> generally as a team i think probably just like the win streaks this year like going on the 10 game win streak and then the eight game and then the one we were like recently on i think just like it was so much fun coming to the rink everyone like it was just a joy to be around everyone and, and winning always helps that we had such a good group this year and we were just we were at that playoff point and we, we were there was no stopping us i think we were just kept rolling and rolling i think that was probably the best moment uh, in like time in my three years in bingo. So yeah, I'd have to go with that. Just the, the opportunity that we had and how good we were uh, taking advantage of that and, and we couldn't stop winning. So about you, Brett? Yeah. Yeah. Similar, you know, obviously at the end we were on a heater there and um, one game in particular, I know that I kind of sticks out to me was uh, I think we we're in Syracuse when I don't know if we came back late and tied it. And then when we went to, went to overtime and then we went into the shootout there and I think <laughs> I don't know if it was Merkley or someone we thought he scored and then uh, we all celebrated we were going off the ice and they called it no goal and then I think Cher ended up coming out like the next shooter <laughs> and did that big move and it was a massive celebration we kind of you know we we're kind of dinks we rubbed it in a bit to the fans <laughs> and the other team but um but no that was that was a pretty sweet win I thought you were talking about um, that Rochester game in Rochester when it was a shootout win. And I think, I think Streeter had the winner there. 
And I think you scored late, right, in the third period. You guys were down yeah, three, yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, But then the, the Syracuse one, I, yeah. I almost – I don't know how I wasn't laughing because it was <laughs> – that was a – I mean, that was a four-minute delay. Like, they were looking yeah. at it from, from it overhead. Long. And you got – half you guys, I think, went off the ice. And then – the yeah, goal. I was already taking my shoulder pads off. I, think. <laughs> I had a bad, I had that gut feeling. I'm like, oh man, like they call it yeah. goal. It's gonna back and fire on. Oh yeah, back. yeah, that was uh, yeah the superstition there. But but then uh, man, when when Shara came down and scored and he turned and pointed the goal pointed back the, to yeah. us, I thought there. I mean, both and both teams were on the ice. I was like, oh boy, this one could get uh, uh, this mm-hmm. one could get pretty ugly. Um, all right, final question you can pick two things that you must have during quarantine and you, you can't live without it. No people. Two things. It could be a pet. All, all about pets. So we'll start with Brett. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a pet to, to turn to, but um, maybe more so at the beginning of quarantine, I was watching one, a lot of Netflix. So that, uh, that killed a lot of time for me going through, some different, uh, some different series and movies there. Um, I don't know, probably. And then I, this is kind of a weird one, but um, like having a like a backyard at my parents' place, me and my brother will go out and bring our wedges out and do some chipping and stuff like that. Um, so we usually do that a couple of times a week. So yeah, probably uh, definitely Netflix, and then maybe having being able to go out in the backyard and do some chipping. Working on the short game, that's the the toughest <laughs> one. Yeah, that's right. What Netflix, uh, what have you been kind of binging? I think I've blown through like 30 shows already. Yeah, I watched The Tiger King. Everyone's probably seen that by now. It was, it was really good. Um, been crushing Ozark quite a bit. And then uh, and then every night me and uh, my dad and brother will either watch a documentary or a movie. So we've been uh, zipping through those. Um, the Last Dance Jordan ones, they're pretty pretty awesome too. Yeah, that um, suggestion, I'll make a, a Netflix suggestion, uh, if you like the documentary kind of style. Uh, there's a show called Waco on Netflix, and it is okay. unbelievable. It, it's a true story, and it's crazy. You watch it, and you're like, how did this happen? It was mid-'90s, I think, and it was uh, uh, out, just outside of Waco, Texas, and they call it the religious cult, and ATF stormed it, and it's wow. crazy. So. Take a look at it if, if you get yeah, a chance. Beauty. We'll go yeah. with uh, Whitey. What have you been kind of watching? By the way, Ozark, great. I won't it's ruin amazing. it if you haven't. If you haven't finished, did you finish the season, Brett? No, I'm still, I'm still battling through it. <laughs> shoot me a message when you're done with it because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. How about you, Whitey? Uh, I'm not going to copy Brett, but Netflix and Ozark is, uh, is up there. Um, and then The Last Dance with Michael Jordan is up there as well. Um, and then probably just like a couple of books I've been reading a lot and it's just sort of eaten up uh, a lot of time. And then uh, probably just a pair of shoes and, and going for walks uh, just to also kill time and, and get outside. Uh, anytime you can get outside and get out of the house, it's uh, always fun during this time for sure. All right. One final, I, I lied. One final question. If you, and this one came in, if you could pick, if, if there's someone on the team that you would not want to be in quarantine with, who would it be? Nick Merkley. No question. Why? <laughs> I need to know why. Nick Merkley. Uh, I think everyone knows why. Okay. We'll keep it. No, I'm just kidding. No, he's, uh, he's probably up there to be one of the guys I would want to hang out with, but he's just the guy I like to pick on. So. <laughs> It happens. It happens. All right, Colton. How about you? Uh, probably uh, Fabian Zetterland. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do I want to know why, or we just leave it at that? Uh, we'll just leave it. We at can that. leave it at that. All right. All right. <laughs> um, and then Murph chimed in. Of course, not doing too much right now, but he wanted to know how annoying it is to do interviews with me. So I want to know, you know, am I annoying? To you guys. No, no, no you're, thank you're good. Thank you. Not at all. I, had worse, had worse ones. That's for sure. I appreciate that. <laughs> Murph is just—he's yeah. ruthless right now on social media. Yeah. He's got nothing to do. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, uh, I appreciate it. Stay safe, and we hope to see you guys soon. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks Rob. Rob.